Today we're just going to do a brief video on solder techniques. This is a taboo subject. A lot of guys uh, try to solder and don't do a really good job at it. Most guys have it down pat, but there's a lot of guys I think out there that would really like to learn more about solder and how it should be done versus how it is done. So let's get to it. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you some different uh, soldering types of tools as well as technique. Okay, so there's a few important parts to the soldering process. Number one, temperature control. To be able to control the temperature of your tip is very important. You don't want something that's overheated, but it obviously has to be hot enough to melt the solder and draw it into the wire. So you want to make sure that you have a good ability to control temperature. We're not going to focus on bench soldering today. We're going to focus more on production soldering in the vehicle. So bench soldering is easy. If you have a bench station, you can dial in the temperature. It's very simple to control your temperature there. However, in the vehicle, depending on what type of soldering iron you're using, whether you're using butane, battery operated, or a plug-in soldering gun, temperature control, again, is very important. The other very important part that I see a lot of guys uh, not take care of is cleanliness of the solder tip itself. Make sure you keep the slag cleaned off that solder tip. It makes things a lot nicer and neater. So to do that, I use a couple different tools, either a small wire brush or a piece of uh, emery cloth or a Brillo pad or anything that just basically just will get that slag off the solder tip to allow you to solder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you real quick what it looks like to get a good solder joint on here. If you're soldering heavier gauge wires, so main primary wires on the heavy gauge harness, I make sure not to twist those wires on the piece of wire that's being soldered to the main line. So it makes it so it's, the wires will actually fit a lot better and tighter. I've, if you twist those wires, they like to pull away and it makes it harder to get a good solder joint. So this is where I start. And again, I personally prefer a solder gun. I know you probably think I'm old school, which I really am, but I've been using the same type of solder gun for years. So I've just gotten used to it. So there is no wrong tool as long as it works. So with this, you're going to make sure that you're actually applying the heat on the side of the solder tip. The tip is not used to solder. You're going to, uh, you're going to actually touch the wire and make contact with this side piece and you'll see it melt solder. So you know, it's hot enough. So you're going to take this and hold it against the wire as you're feeding solder in once you have it hot enough. You'll see the wire will take that solder and at that point you can release the trigger or turn the heat off basically on the solder gun and, and that wire is soldered. So you'll see now it doesn't take long for that to cool and I can't move that wire. You'll see if it was if you find a cold solder joint, you'll see that the wire will slide up and down on the up, on the wire that's soldered too. But you need to just make sure that that you can pull on that connection and you know that it's a good solid connection. So the other wire that I want to show you. So for example, if you needed to connect ignition to your pink wire from the blade harness, we're just going to quick strip back our ignition wire. And then these smaller gauge wires, a lot of times, especially in the vehicle, I will put a small twist on these just to make it easier to thread those around the wire. And then again, just make sure you're twisted tightly. And then I'll demonstrate a battery operated Milwaukee. I'm sure a lot of you guys use this. Uh, it works really well in tight places. So this takes a little bit longer to heat up and has a little bit less control over the heat. But as long as you get that hot enough to melt solder, which takes a minute, like I said, you'll see that it will suck that solder right into the wire. So don't bother holding it on the wire until it actually melts solder. There we go. See, it's starting to melt the solder now. So you're going to take the side of the tip, make contact with the wire, and then make sure that you're holding that on there until you get solder actually sucking into the wire. If it's just sitting on top of the wire or if it's just balled up on that connection, that is not a good solder joint. So you'll see that that is now soldered. 
you're gonna these will hold solder so you usually i can flick that tip off and it will clean it up but you'll see this connection again is very solid you cannot move that so if you guys have any suggestions any tips please post them in the comments there is no perfect way, like I said, everyone has their own way to solder. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to see how I do it and make sure that you do know that it does take extra heat versus what most people use to suck that solder into the wires and make sure that they are, in fact, fused together. Guys, stay safe and have a great day.